of the circus. Jerry of the circus. Well, good morning, Jerry. What are you doing up so bright and early? I got up when we hit down this morning. You are ambitious. We got in about five, didn't we? Yep. I couldn't sleep. Besides, Mr. Randall said there was a surprise for me. Yeah, I might have known. What was the surprise? Spike's back. No. Well, that's great. He met us at the run this morning, and was he glad to get back with the circus? Mm, I can imagine. Murray said he did the work of four men this morning. I guess he's always been a good worker. Sure. And now he's trying to make up for all the time he lost out while the police held him back there on that counterfeit charge. Spike certainly gets mixed up in more police things than anyone I ever heard of. Yeah, it's a shame. Of course, after it happened the first time, it was naturally he'd be suspected the next time that trouble came up. Yeah, he's had more than his share of bad luck. Hey, what's wrong with Daisy? She's roaring something fierce. Is she sick? No, at least they don't think so. They all seem restless this morning. I can't quite make it out. That's funny. Are they off their feet? Well, I've been checking things up pretty carefully. I was afraid perhaps they'd gotten some tainted meat. But that can't be it. Whatever it is, it sure can't be. Hey, look at Nemo over there. He's thrashing around like he's crazy. Well, I'm staying right here till the matinee. It's funny, when they get restless, they all go haywire. If I stick around, I'm sure I can calm them down by showtime. I sure hope so. Gee, it's kind of a funny morning, isn't it? Yeah, there's not a bit of air stirring. Think it's gonna rain? <laughs> not with the sun out like that. I know, but there doesn't seem to be any clouds and... The sun's kind of dull, and the sky's all yellowish instead of blue. Say, you're quite a weatherman, Jerry. <laughs> what do you predict? Oh, I don't know exactly. I've never seen it like this before. Daisy! Hey there, take it easy. What's wrong, old lady? She certainly knows when you're talking to her, all right. Now, that a girl. Well, then, take it easy. It's funny, I, I can't make this out. As a rule, Daisy's the most tractable of the whole lot. Hi there, folks. What's the matter? So busy talking to your lions, you can't say hello to your friends? Oh, Patsy. Hiya, Patsy. We didn't see you. Oh, what's up? <laughs> oh, nothing special. I just sort of thought I was being neglected lately, so I came around to find out what's going on. We wouldn't neglect you, Patsy. I should say not. Gee, I, I guess I haven't seen you much the uh, last few days. You know, what with Uncle Dan coming back and Spike just got in this morning, I... Well, I suppose I've been kind of busy. Spike? Oh, that's great. I'm certainly glad he's out of that mess. <laughs> yeah, I guess he is, too. Uh-huh, and what about you, Jason? Well, Jerry seems to have a pretty good alibi. <laughs> you know, I'm always glad to see you, Patsy. <laughs> I used to think so. Seems to me as if you've been avoiding me the last day or so. Now, you're just imagining things, Patsy. Sure thing. Say, every time I see Jason, he asks where you are, and it seems like if we aren't talking about his lions, we usually end up talking about you. Hey, Jerry. Well, it's so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must say that's very encouraging. Oh, I'd begun to think I'd done something or, or no, said something. No, you couldn't, Patsy. Don't ever worry about that. I guess I've just been kind of busy, that's all. Hemo! Pipe down there! Say, Patsy, where'd you get that pretty bracelet? Uh -huh. It is pretty, isn't it? Gee, I'll say. I ain't never saw one like that before. So big and heavy. And all that carbon. Mm -hmm. well, what is it, silver? That's right, Jerry. But the jewels. Say, that must be valuable. That's really beautiful, Patsy. I never saw you wear that before. Looks like a family heirloom. Oh, it is. Seems like it's pretty valuable to bring on the road. Well, it's not really mine. That is, well, I'm just wearing it. 
Who gave it to you? Uh, Boris. Oh. Jiminy Willikers, I, I never knew he was that generous. Of course, it's none of my business, Patsy, but seems like that's a pretty valuable present to accept from anyone. Yes, I, I know, Jason. I, I didn't want to take it. But he insisted and acted like his feelings were so hurt when I refused it that I... Can you well, be Boris giving away something like that? Well, it all happened like this. He seemed so kind of blue. You know, after that time he got all dressed up to go to that party and, and no one came for him. <laughs> Poor Boris. Must have been a blow to his pride to fall for a gag like that. Well, when he got to talking to me, I could see he was feeling pretty badly. Everyone kidding him so. Oh, he's old enough to take a joke. I know. But sometimes grown-ups are worse than kids. Well, anyhow, he got to telling me about his mother. Seems like she must have looked an awful lot like me. He said even her voice was like mine. And, well, he got to talking, and then later he came back with this bracelet and said it belonged to her, and... And he gave it to you, huh? Well, he wanted to. I said, of course, it was too... Well, that that I just couldn't accept it. Well, he had a lot of nerve. Oh, but I felt awfully sorry for him, Jason. He talked just like a lonely little boy. Boris did? I'd never seen him like that before. So, when he just was so terribly hurt because I didn't even want to wear it, well, I just finally had to say that I would wear it for a while. Well, of course, you're old and old enough to know what you'd want to do, Patsy. You're not angry with me, are you, Jason? No, of course not. It's none of my business what you do, Patsy. Well, of course, if you put it that way, it certainly isn't. Still, if your best friends can't be reasonable, I don't... Nemo! Daisy! Nero! Nero, what's wrong, old fella? Those cats have been acting up funny all morning. Hmm. They're not the only things acting funny. Oh. What did you say, Patsy? Hey, Patsy, where you going? Sorry, I've got things to do, Jerry. Well, what do you know? Uh, can I do anything, Jason? Lady! Lady, you know there's nothing wrong. Yeah, that's right. Now, don't get all excited. They sure quiet down when you talk to them, don't they? Well, they know I do everything I can to make their lives easy. Say, where'd Patsy go? I don't know. She just said something about having something to do and barged off. <laughs> Isn't that like a woman, though? Ask for your advice, and then when you give it to her, she goes off in a huff. Mm hmm You know, Jason, I've been thinking. <laughs> I was afraid of that, Jerry. I could almost hear you. Yeah? Say, uh, how long has Boris been with Mr. Randall? Oh, a couple of years. And Patsy's been with him longer than that, hasn't she? Yeah, ever since she was a kid. Doesn't it seem kind of strange that traveling together like this for so long that... This would be the first time he'd ever tell Patsy how much she looks like his mother? You're right, Jerry. I hadn't thought of that. Though I've been thinking of plenty of other things. What? Well, I'm afraid I don't like Boris very well, Jerry. So it wouldn't be fair for me to say. But you do like Patsy a lot. Too much, I'm afraid. Ah, oh, go on. How can you like anyone too much? Will you grow up, Jerry? <laughs> You'll find out. Well, anyhow, I think it's kind of funny that Boris should all of a sudden notice that Patsy looks like his mother and... When she did, when she was young, and never have mentioned it in all this time. Don't you like Boris either? Well, not too much. You see, he doesn't treat Whitey very well. He usually doesn't bother about being nice to anyone unless there's something they can do for him. Say, maybe that's it. What? No, it couldn't be. What on earth could Patsy do for Boris? But there must be something funny going on. Gee, I wish I knew what it was. Well, it looks like you've got another detective job all cooked up and ready for you to work on. Well, guess you'll have to help me on this one, because so far it just doesn't make much sense. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't help you much this time, Jerry. You see, liking Patsy the way I do, if I do or say anything against Boris, well, it looks like I'm jealous and not being very gentlemanly about it. Gee, you're right. I never thought of that. Say, Jason, the, the sun's gone in. Look. Nero! Stop that! Everything's all right. Take it easy, boy. Man, this guy is funny. Sort of sullen. And everything's so quiet. He look, not a leaf stirring. So you people are noticing the weather too, eh? Yeah. Oh, it's you, Kelly. I don't remember ever seeing it quite like this before. Have you? Once, but I've been trying not to think about it all morning. What do you mean, Kelly? Well, I hate to say anything, but it looks like we'll find out soon enough anyhow, so... I may as well admit that this looks mighty like tornado or cyclone weather to me. What? Say, that ought to be exciting. Yeah, you betcha. It's too exciting for my taste. You're not serious. Yes, I am. Of course, I ain't been in one of those things since I was a kid, but I'll tell you if you're ever caught in one, it's something you'll never forget. You mean we might be getting a cyclone? I couldn't say, Jerry. I, I never been in a cyclone, but I was in a tornado once, and it was terrible. Is this the right part of the country for those things, Kelly? I'm not right sure, Jason. 
Uh, but we're not far from that cyclone belt. Gee whiz. I don't know whether the folks around here have cyclone cellars or not. Uh, but they have them in Park City, I know, uh, and over by Wellerton. A uh, cellar just for cyclones? Oh, I, you're kidding, Kelly. <laughs> Indeed, I'm not. Uh, listen, Jerry, when a thing like that hits, there's no use fooling around about saving anything. The only thing you can do is to get into an underground cellar or get flat on the ground in a ditch or something deep. Say, even as exciting as that sounds, I I don't know as I'm so anxious to get mixed up in one of those things. Well, I should say not. But uh, what's the difference between a cyclone and a tornado? Well, a cyclone is also a windstorm, but instead of coming straight for you in a straight line, it comes in a huge circle, like in a mince funnel. Well, I guess that isn't what we're going to have, because... It's so awful quiet. Yeah, that's the trouble. It, it's too quiet. It, it often gets like that just before one of those bad winds come up. Daisy! I'm ashamed of you, old girl. Your animal's been nervous, too, this morning? Yeah, I'll say. Can't seem to get them settled down. Yeah, we've been having our trouble over in the menagerie top. Especially them zebras. They sure have been ornery. Do you think they might sense there's something funny in the air? That's what I'm afraid of. The elephants were stamping around and trumpeting like mad. However, Gertie took command and got order in the ranks. <laughs> She's your boss of that herd, isn't she? And she knows how to keep order, too. I, I wish she could keep those pesky zebras in order. Oh, what about the giraffes? Well, they're flighty and dumb, but we can always handle them. It's the zebras that are stubborn and dangerous in an emergency. Say, uh, looks like the sun is trying to get out. Well, I hope I didn't get you folks worried, but then there's no use not being prepared in case of trouble. Yeah, you're dead right, Kelly. Say, it'd be fierce if a cyclone had come up while Jason was in the steel, wouldn't it? Hey, don't even think of such things, Jerry. And there's one thing to remember, and that is you can see those things coming a long way off. Yeah, that's the only good thing I know about it. And you say the best thing to do is to lie flat on the ground? Yeah, that's right. I'll sure remember that. Guess I'd better get rags. In case of trouble, we've sure got to stick together. Well, I hope this isn't just a false alarm, but for the present, I guess I'd better give my cats a little attention. 